Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.82 and in this lesson we're going to start talking about multi-sample mode of the sampler. So in single sample mode I've really covered everything that you can cover. The thing about the sampler is it's the easiest instrument but at the same time it can be the most powerful. There are a million applications to using the sampler and one of the most common ones that you'll probably do is you'll create some kind of sound and it probably won't be inside of a synthesizer. It will just be a sample that you've brought in, you've manipulated in some way, and then you want to be able to key track it and play it on your keyboard. So you can just drag and drop it in like so and uh, go forth. It really is that simple. But now we're going to go into the other mode, which is multi-sample mode. And this mode still leaves a few things to be desired. I could really see multi-sample mode being super powerful if they just made a couple of slight changes to it. But for now, we'll take what we've got and see what we're able to do with it. So let's start by talking about a drum loop. All right, so here's our drum loop here. And if I right click on this drum loop, I have the ability to either slice to drum machine or slice to multi sample. We'll do both, but before we do that, I want to go in here and I'm going to go into my onsets. And if I go into my onsets, I can click somewhere I could double click if I click one and delete it that's what happens but I can go in here and I can create onset markers at the start of my hits or I can maybe pull them back if I feel like that's not quite in the right place that one looks good maybe pull that one back just a little bit etc etc and by default what Bitwig will do when it analyzes the file is try to find where the transients are occurring where my different hits are happening and put in some uh, onset markers for me. Tempo doesn't really matter as long as we're playing back at the original tempo. So you can see I have 102 here and I've synced this up to 102, um, but really we could choose any number. We could put 150 as long as we get 150 down here in the tempo for our clip. That way we play back at the original pitch, the original speed without any stretching or anything happening. Because that's what I want when I'm going to be slicing this up. I don't really care about the drum loop as it is originally. I want to mess around with it. So again, like I said, they'll include an onset at the very beginning, even though you don't see it. I'll right click here and we'll try both modes. I'll slice to my drum machine and I want to slice at the onsets. You can choose whatever you want in here, but if we slice at onset, that gives us the most control because inside of the clip, we can set wherever we want the onsets to be. So this is going to make 14 slices. All right, good enough for me. I'll click OK. And now if I solo this and play it back, we have our drum loop. So that sounds pretty good. I'll also slice this to a multi-sample. Again, onsets all the same. Click OK. Now these look ident identical right now. And they're going to sound identical, but they are different. If we look in here at the drum machine, we see that instead of having a sampler, we have a pad based interface. So this looks like, you know, an MPC 3000 only in the digital realm. And what it's done is it's taken my onsets and it sliced each of them to an individual uh, sampler that's working in single sample mode, meaning that I can go in here and let's turn record on. And I could take the samples and I could actually program in a beat if I wanted to do that. Or just record in whatever. And so it's going to save that and I could manipulate that around and create a beat with these new sounds. The other real advantage to a drum machine, and most of you are going to think after seeing this, well, why would I ever want to uh, work with multi-sample mode when I can do this. But what we have the ability to do is to go into each of these individual samples and then we could process them independently. So I could put a distortion on this. And if I wanted to, I could put on like a delay on here. And I can also adjust the output from here. They're all by default going to have some velocity sensitivity on them as well, which is helpful. And you can see the advantage to that. Also, if I tab over here, 
I can double click on my drum machine and I get all of my individual cells like so. So I can adjust panning or adjust volume or go in here again and continue to manipulate further. But we're not too concerned about the drum machine for right now. And I am the type of person who strongly believes that just because you can have more control over a signal doesn't mean that your music is going to be any better. Okay, so just because we can go into a drum machine and have all this individual processing power doesn't mean we have to. Great music was made before we had all of this control, so great music can be made still. I'm kind of just saying that because I also know that everybody will be using the drum machine for this purpose nine times out of ten. But now if we look at the sampler, you can see something has changed. We don't see our wave shapes. If I turn this on to record... I'm getting the same kind of results, but it's all falling within this one instrument. And I can turn down velocity sensitivity for right now. And now to actually see my samples, what I have to do is I have to click edit in here and it pops up and we can see what's happened is that it is now populated this range starting from C1 up until I think C sharp two with our samples in order. And we can go in here again and see what's happened to each of these spaces. And by default, it's key tracked it across. All right, so if I need to go in here and maybe slightly adjust the start or end time of a sample. I can do that. I could also change around the order. But let's say that we go in here and I don't really want this one. I could go in and I can delete the zone by just clicking the backspace. Now, one thing I can't do is I can't copy, paste, or duplicate any of these zones. So what you see is what you get. And what I'd have to do now is try to move everything over. But by default, it doesn't just let me click and move over. So what I have to do is I actually have to change the range of this. I'd have to pull this back to C sharp one and pull this back to C-sharp 1 and move everything over like so. The other thing I could do is I could have this sound play both when I click C-sharp and when I click D. And to do that, I just have to change the range and pull this up to D. Now, another thing to be aware of is none of these are key tracking at the moment. All right, they're all set to root of C3. If we go through, we could see that like so. What I could do is I could actually go a little crazy in here. I could key track this. All right, I could delete this zone here. And we could hear that we're now playing a C1 because we're at root C3, but I have to hit a C1 to play it. If I change this to C1, we'll hear the sample back at its original pitch. If I can find C1 on here. Perfect, and now I could actually have this play out. And now as I play up the keyboard, it's actually gonna key track it. But at that point, we're almost back to working in single sample mode, only we now have additional uh, samples in here. I could also go in and I could choose to reverse something. We could change this around a little bit. And one thing you can do if you don't really want to uh, have this play out over multiple notes on the keyboard, you can key track it and then you can just kind of set the pitch of this to whatever you want in relation to C3. So if we listen to it now. And I could, of course, turn this down. We also have a fine tuning of sense. So if I want this not to be where it's playing now, but not to actually go up to a whole nother note, I could adjust that. Let's turn it down a little bit more. The other option I have is I can actually turn on loop mode here. All right, and then I could set a loop within my sample range. So you will hear what this sounds like. Or I could just have it loop the whole sample.
like so. And now really we could go into all of these samples, see which ones we don't want, delete them, and then maybe just be left with four or five notes, which we could then go in to program a quick little drum beat. Uh, this isn't the way you're always going to be programming in drums. Typically what you'll do is, you know, you'll drag and drop samples into a drum machine, make a standard drum beat. And then what I often like to do with my tops or with any additional layers of drums is to go from classic drum loops that I found myself, drop them into something like this mode, and then make a top loop and slightly adjust and change the sounds. So I hope that's been helpful for you guys. This is multi-sample in a nutshell, but in the next few videos, we're going to be talking about some other things you can do inside of this mode and uh, a few things you might want to be careful about. All right. Thank you so much for watching. You'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.